Covering the world of professional poker. From the people who know it best. Gavin Smith. Smith. Ah, put on. I just got it. Joe Seabock. So you're saying that you do not like to be stroked. And Ollie Major. How much would it suck to have an A-Rap deport? Poker Road Radio. Brought to you by the World Poker Tour. Good morning, everyone. Ollie with the Cub and the Caveman at 11 a.m. bright and early here at a very empty Amazon Room hallway. We're chugging into the home stretch. Yes. We are chugging into the home but stretch. But you know what? I don't, I don't like what's going on here. No, Gavin, please it explain. Sucks. It please sucks. explain. Well, security suck, basically, in a nutshell. Yeah. We can put this into two words or uh, four words. Five words. Security <laughs> at the Rio sucks. I mean, they won't let anyone in here. They wouldn't. They won't. They won't let me in. I'm walking in, and the guy says to me, "What are you doing?" I'm. I'm like, I'm going to do my radio show. He says, "Where's your badge?" I said, "I don't have a badge." He says, "You need a badge." I said, "I'm going to do my radio show." He says, "You gotta have a badge." I'm like, "I haven't had a badge the entire series." Well, if you don't get a badge, you're not gonna be doing the show. I said, "Well, I guess we're gonna test that theory." So uh, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, I apparently have conflict with security uh, scheduled for about ten fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, all right, guys, eight seven seven eight 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 WSOP. That is the number that I would expect everyone is committed to memory by this point. So that if indeed you are in the seven hundred two and you are attempting to make your way back here to the Poker Road Radio booth, you will phone in as yeah. One we'll send we'll send somebody out to get bring you in. Yeah, exactly. We'll send Gloria. No, we'll send Gloria you, Balling out to get you. You know. Hey, is that the same guy over there that, that That's Chris. barge we, security? Yeah, it? yeah. It's Chris, Chris part of us. Who's been here every show? This Are you kidding me? Yeah. Every single show. And this I, is I, the man. I, I didn't know him. <laughs> Chris has set bad, forth Chris. a new movement of security breaching here exactly. at the Rio. Chris will be the guy that goes and brings people in. Chris will be the guy who goes and brings people in. What we will do, too, because you know how, like, on the Letterman show, they got the Biff Henderson and they, like, send him out to, like, yeah, do random yeah, stuff? Yeah. Chris is the new Biff Henderson for Pro Radio, <laughs> and I have arranged for a wireless microphone to be with Chris as he goes back there, so we can actually How get... How far does that stretch? How far does the microphone uh, no, stretch? No, we're, we're all the way down the hallway. Well, we're then good. why don't we go interview the security at some point during the show and ask them... I like it. I like, yeah, I, like, I, like I like it. Let's find out exactly why security are, are I, I, basically I think, pickles up there. And I want Chris to do the interview. I, I want wireless headphones on Chris <laughs> with a wireless mic. <laughs> I want him over there going, all right, I just would like to know why it is. That you have single-handedly sabotaged the Poker Road Radio it's audiences yeah. from the Rio here. It's bull. If you can't tell, guys, listening at home, we're a little bitter about the situation. It's the second straight <laughs> day that we are running into this. This is all we have left, though. We are out of the main event. I know. This is what we have. We could change the world with our radio show if security would just allow us yeah. to do so. They don't realize. Basically, security is setting the world back 10, 15 years. Yeah, minimum. <laughs> minimum. I love Complete it. Complete agreement. PR radio chat on AOL Instant Messenger is where you can get on and ask questions. we got a special interview guest today. Last minute, about 11 p.m., I managed to pick up David Oppenheim. Nice. No way. Yes, and he is coming in. The only thing he has asked us Opie. to do is find out what table he is sitting at. He's still, he, he is <laughs> still in the main, yes. Yeah. Have we figured it out He yet? is still in the main, yes. Strong, are we on that? Uh, I think, yeah, we can, we can research that. Why don't we get Chris on it? Let's give Chris some responsibilities. If he's <laughs> it out here. Has Chris become five-pound baby Jesus? He is, I don't have water. Chris no. is like two-and-a-half-pound exactly. baby Jesus. Chris is two-and-a-half-pound. He has not yet graduated to five-pound. Uh, new ETB blogs going up today. The Smoke Break, everybody's favorite. Um, you guys don't know who that is. It's Eugene Todd, bro. Perhaps the most popular single human on Poker Road Radio. Yeah, yeah but he actually could be getting fired. No. What do you mean could be getting what fired? Are you about? Uh, he's dogged me a little too much on his blogs, and if he doesn't stop, he's got to go. Hmm. What now? Specifically, what has he been doing? Yeah, he's bitching about me not doing well because I was on his fantasy team. <laughs> but oh, but see, that's not. That's like an inverse. He's not really attacking love. you. It's love. He's saying he's sad no, he, you didn't do well because no, he, he, he loves you. No, he can't do that. But see, I think, I, think, I think you're reading it wrong. I think it's love. No matter how I'm reading it, it's what I'm going to act on. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone if it continues. Executive decision-making. Kevin Smith going to lower the boom on ETB. All right, I hope he's listening out there. We'll find out pretty quick here whether or not Eugene Todd listens yeah, to Poker Radio. In if he is. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, we're going to handle some tourney recap business. We've got some poker news. I've got some poker news fresh off the press, too, that isn't even in the rundown. Mm -hmm. That was courtesy of one Janine Deeb. Oh, really? I was walking through the hallway. Oh, actually, yes. I know this. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a little bit problematic. It's a little bit unsettling. Uh, we're going to do some voicemails since we haven't done that for a while. Uh, and, of course, we're going to have an interview with David Oppenheim. Uh, so, guys, what, what were you up to yesterday? Would you uh, fill your fantastic 112-degree Vegas day with? 
Yes, sir. Uh, after the show, a friend of mine from uh, Windsor, Ontario, is in town, so we went to lunch, followed by a little action at the pie gow table here at the Rio Suites. Really? Hotel and Casino. Uh-oh. Wow. No, I played small, too. Uh, but 50 I went, a hand? How small? I started at 100 a hand and okay. then uh, went up. My biggest bet was, was kind of big because it got a little hot, and I always increase it every time I win. So my biggest bet was maybe like 850 or something like that. No, no, 1150. My biggest bet was 1150. Um, but oh, which the dealers hate because now it's like seven dollars and twenty two cents worth of commission <laughs> when you bet that you're there like. But uh, <laughs> I, I ended up I ended up winning like twelve hundred, so that was a nice afternoon, I guess. No, and, it's not uh, bad at all. Uh, I went to to the cage to um, cash out, mm-hmm. where I gave them my my uh, my card, player card, my my card, and they said, "Well, we got we got to up, update the uh, inf- your information. Do you have your driver's license?" So I give them my driver's license, which unfortunately. Uh, is currently expired. Oh, no. Whoops. Yes. Whoops. So then they wouldn't cash my chips for me. So I still have my chips in my pocket. They so won't I, cash your chips for you? No. So kind of brutal. Yeah, so that kind of sucked. So uh, then... Uh, Why are they IDing you to cash your chips anyway? Well, you can They've give them to me or anybody me. you know. We'll go cash them. Yeah, I don't trust you guys, though. Um, wow. So, uh, that doesn't work out for me. Doesn't trust his <laughs> I co-hosts. could give him the Gloria. That's true. Gloria's um, trustworthy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that Gloria's pay card, uh, player card is going to warrant uh, a $1,200 <laughs> chip cash. 4200 4, actually. Oh, you bought him for three. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, so... Um, so that was that. And then I uh, just went to the gym. I uh, worked out with my trainer, who I got bad news from. He's moving. Dude, I love it when you go to the gym. Yeah, it fires better. me up. It's better. It really yeah, does. It but, fires uh, me up. My, my trainer's moving, so that's bad news. Um, then that night, did nothing. Just, uh, you know, went and lost uh, about 12000 on full tilt. And, uh, no. Yeah, about that. Playing what? Uh, playing a little 2-4 Omaha. I uh, went to bed and got up this morning, went to DMV to, to renew my license. Ugh. So I waited through the line. Got there and uh, then was informed that I needed to have my uh, birth certificate P1 yeah. visa with me to prove that I was allowed to be in this country. Oh, wow. And I'm like, well, God. you issued me this license without me having proof that I was allowed in this country. Why do I have to have it now? And I <laughs> said, well, you just do. That, you know what? Like, the they're DMV. like parents. DMV is like parents. They are like parents. Oh, well, why definitely why like do parents. I need that? Because I said so. Yeah. But that's not a good enough answer for me. Well, that's what you're getting. Yeah. It'd be you awesome know? if you went in and they were like, well, you also need a uh, rutabaga. To get this as well, and you'd be like, oh, I don't understand man. why. Yeah. And they'd be like, No. If you I need go back tomorrow morning and I need a goddamn rutabaga, I'm yeah. gonna be some pissed off. <laughs> so you should probably arrive at the DMB prepared with various fresh produce. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. How take... amazing would that be if he happened to have a rutabaga <laughs> no, like, with him? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the lady's like, You also need a leak, and he's like, Oh, got it right here. Got it right here. What else you got? Like, well, a Yukon saying. potato. Boom. He's like, oh, What do you want? What do you want? Yeah. Um, I-, I walk in with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. Look out, two jacks. Poker Road Radio is, is, is on your heels. <laughs> All right. but, but then also, we, we also have to send out a birthday wish today. To yes, whom, we do. To whom? To a uh, friend of Poker Road Radio. Uh-huh. Possibly listening friend. today. Definitely listening today. Definitely listening today. Yes. Well, I, th- I thought it was definite, but I just wanted to say positive. Or possibly uh-huh. in case something Because you're being up. humble. Something might have come up. You All never right. know. Fair enough. But to uh, Lisa Gray. Lisa. Yes. And who she, is Lisa? We love Lisa. We love Lisa. She was at Lisa. the uh, party the other night. You probably met her briefly. You know what, Ollie? You've right. met her before, yeah. and I think you're a donk for not knowing. I, I'm and not if you're not a donk, last not name because I don't know. Because she is wonderful, and if you don't remember her, there's something wrong with yeah, you. Yeah, there is something wrong with you. Let me. Think. There is something wrong with you. Uh, you know what? I'll get my synapses to we fire. Can here we'll, we can we'll revisit. We can revisit. We will just, revisit. I'll know who it is. By just because the, the only sure. women you actually ever remember are the ones that are like totally oh. in love with you and want to have relations with you. There you go. What type of relations? Sexual. This World Series has been a veritable cornucopia of uh, solicitation. I will tell you that. Uh, main event, day 2A. <laughs> you just like to say that. complete veritable, veritable cornucopia. He loves to say cornucopia. That's my that. favorite freaking word. It's you my know function. What? You're, God, don't take my line. It's not cool. I was just about to say that. <laughs> that pissed me off really a lot. I was just about to you say You know that. what? We should start a jar. <laughs> Every time that you say, because remember, we did this with the um thing that I was yeah, doing when we right. were out in Bay 101. We should Let's start do it. Let's do 10 bucks for every time you say the thing that you're not supposed okay, to say. Okay, and, and, and what's your thing? And we'll select a charity. And I, yeah, I, don't have a, I don't have a thing because I'm not like you guys. There has to be something that you, you Everyone say has to have much. a thing. You can't free roll us. Well, get the guys to eat. We'll uh, listen email. back. We'll get the, get the guys Chris, to listen to the to show. listen back to the last four months of Everybody who's minutes. listening out there, if there's yeah. something that I say more often than I should, please email in so that we can put that in the list. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. I like that. Or call them in. Agreed. Agreed. Either one. Call, email, vo- uh, voicemail. Telegram. Put it on the uh, chat room. Do whatever you can to get in touch with us. Call Ollie's personal cell phone, which the number is 310. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of which, actually, since you're going to say that, I got a prank call last night. 
from you? someone I'm I'm somewhat certain it was someone that I know. But is there is a chance it was some random person got a hold of my number somehow. Like and I don't know which of the two it is, but I do know that it was problematic because they continued to call. Like I would hang up and then they'd call and then That's I'd annoying. hang up and then they'd call. And they'd be like, Is this all Lena Shaw? <laughs> and I was like, Yeah. And they're like, There's been a crime committed. And I'm like, What? <laughs> There's been a crime committed. And I'm like, what? Who is this? I thought for a second it was, it was Rick Fuller and Je- <laughs> <laughs> I got a prank call last night. Well, I don't think it was a prank did call. You re- did we all get them? I did not. Was well, it a prank call Tuesday? I'll tell you what or? happened in mine. I got a phone call. I don't know who it was from. It could have been from someone I know. And wow, that sounds a lot like all these stories. The only sound, it sounded like somebody was in a cab and or a police car. One of the two with a CB radio. But yes, I got the beat. same call. No. Yes. But nobody said anything. No, nobody you said, you know, it's Probably crime. somebody didn't get bailed out of jail that you guys both know. <laughs> we think it's a prank call. <laughs> well, if they didn't get bailed out of jail, they That's did where really fight about baby Jesus is. He's in jail. No, they Where'd only get go? one call. They only get one call. He's hiding? That's where two calls. No, yeah, that's two calls. And it was like... <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Maybe it's it is the same weird. person. <laughs> okay, so it's got to be someone that we know, because what are the chances that... One guy was able to get both of them. Well, mine was numbers. a 702 number. Mine was a 702 number. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to compare right now. I will put this number on the air, by the way, for sure. And everyone called this son right, of a bitch. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. 877 is not a 976 dial number. You do not have to pay that. It's toll frizzy. Here, here, here's the number 702. <laughs> hold on. Let me compare. No, no, no. Hold on. 702. Uh, I'll give you the next few numbers. Yeah. 521. Yes. 77. Yes. What's, who is this? 99. Nine. We got to figure out who this is. Did you get it too, Gavin? Yeah, we got to – no, no, no. We got to figure out who this is, though. All right. Because I got the same thing. And I I just assumed it was a wrong number. Seven – all right. We're going to call this son of a bitch. (laughs) Why don't we we call the number right now? I'll call the damn number right now. What is it? It's no, no. We're gonna do it on the on the oh, live okay. number here. Let's find out who the and, hell this and, person is. And everyone is. out there, take note of this telephone number: seven zero two five two one seven seven nine nine. I would like us to make life as inconvenient as possible for whoever this is, Let's so out that they is. never ever attempt to prank call us. This is the equivalent. Hello, everyone. Of this is Mike Sexton from the <laughs> <laughs> How amazing would that it's be? It's like I thought I call y'all. I, I'm in jail. I, I thought I thought you guys were my. I just friends. want to call you guys, let you know we had a baby. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, it's ringing. It's ringing. Good. Let's get this person. Let's on the get phone. on. It's, We're gonna find can out. Can we get? Can we get the ring on the air? Can we? Can we do that? Oh, oh this is a professional. Oh, this is a professional wow. job. This is a professional. Hi, this is Mike Sexton. Open <laughs> 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 World Radio. <laughs> We, wow. we we must get to the bottom of this. We, absolutely we must. Yeah, get to the you're on Poker Road Radio. <laughs> no, no. Well, who is it? Who is it? <laughs> this cannot. This this cannot happen. That people prank you. Can you believe that? That's shut amazing. Phone off. Se- and it hey, was late last I'm night. Gus Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he was going back to Denmark. Seven zero two five two one seven seven nine nine. What is been going on? What a rat bastard! This is unbelievable. I yeah, can't it was total it. CB radio yeah, taxi cab. Police totally, car, totally. Like, Oh, That's I amazing. really, I really, can we do reverse phone? Can someone out there, like, figure out? Because we, if we can give us the, like, weight of a squid, you can definitely yeah, tell me true. how I can get the name of the person whose number this belongs to. So email us, prradio at pokerroad.com. Let me get to some business here. Main event, day 2A, has come to a close. 1,251 players started the day. 466 remain. You guys know about the chip leader? You guys um, heard about this? I don't know who the chip leader is. He I know who one of the chip leaders are. He is the man. Earlier in the day, I was doing stuff for ESPN, and they brought over a random amateur mm-hmm. who had quite a few chips. His name was Brian Shadlick. Mm-hmm. He won a $130 satellite in West Virginia at a racetrack wow. to get his seat. He's a special education teacher, wow. and he is now up to 801000 in chips, over wow. 400 ahead of second place. Wow. Also in the hunt. Third place, Jeremiah Smith. Jeremiah Smith, our boy. J. Smith, not to be confused with G. Smith. Right. Uh, okay, and uh, I have, I have, new, I have very uh, immediate news. Although I could not hear the voice, I just called that number. Yeah. It has not been disconnected. Oh, what's going a on? A woman Jesus. answered the phone. A woman. A woman answered the phone. So you guys have a woman stocking. Wow. Me. Well, that that's it was not the voice Matt, was Matt. Can woman. we place another <laughs> telephone call to this number here? Let's let's make another effort to contact this individual. They, well, she didn't answer anyways. It went to her voicemail. Oh, well, let's what hear the voicemail say? message. I want to hear the voicemail message. I don't. I, I, I was listening to you guys. I couldn't hear. Oh, man. We'll Let me, call, oh, we'll call it on the break. We will call it on the Di- break. No, we'll no, no. Let's call on the air. I want Dial to it, it again, and I'll Dial listen it. to it. When, when it, go, when it goes I'm Kimberly voice. Lansing, and you're no. listening. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get... I want to hear the ring on the air. That's always cool. 
702-521-7799. For all you people that haven't heard the number out there, I believe it's 521-7799. Now, I wouldn't give away the number, but I'm guessing it's 702-521-7799. Can we, can we hear the ring on the air and, and the voicemail? Greeting? No, he's listening on my phone. No, no, no. We don't want to call off air. That's not fun for our listeners. Stop calling. It's good. Oh, yes. I'm Layla Kaylee, and you're no. this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a girl named Erin. Oh, is it the ESPN girl? No. Wait, oh, well, hold on. No. How come it's unable to complete it when Matt calls, but it's, it's able to it's complete it when you reach Aaron. That's what it said. We know Please a lot of Aaron's. I know a lot of Aaron's. This is weird. We've got to get Aaron. to the bottom of this. Um, no, the ESPN girl wouldn't have a, a 702. No, she number. wouldn't have a number. Aaron. Coscarelli? No, she doesn't have one. We are going to find this. Yeah, out. we've definitely got to got to find out. Brandon Adams, Eric Crane, and Chino Ream all in the top no, 10 with over 300,000 in chips. Poker Rotors, Haralaba, Vulgaris, Anna Robleski, and unfortunately... All of them. BG. We are, being, we are being laid to waste on have, the freeway that is the World Series of Poker. They have all unfortunately busted. Barry Other notable Greenstein eliminations. Busted? Yes. Barry, yeah. You know why? BG, uh, why? Because of his little comment to me yesterday. What did he say? <laughs> that oh, was yeah. hilarious. That was pretty <laughs> that was unbelievably <laughs> hilarious, though. <laughs> you may want to have thought about doing this last month. Is that what he said? <laughs> Starting this last month or something? Uh, Thomas Walrus, Lee Markold, Greg Mueller, Eric Lindgren. Ah! Fuck that guy. Fuck Eric. Fuck Eric. <laughs> no, no. Not anymore. Not now that anymore. he busted out, I'm, I'm hurting. Now we like him again? I'm hurting. Because he's human? Uh, the takeover himself, Nick Shulman out of Bill the Ad- Bill Edler, the stunning one. John Hennigan, Blair Hinkle, and the stunning one, Bill Edler. They're dropping like flies, boys. You know what's amazing? I mean, obviously, we would all agree that as far as the prelims here at the World Series, it's been the year of the pro. You know, pros oh, have taken sure. them down. But this made it. I mean, there are, like, no professional names that are, that are, I mean, we, obviously in day 2A, we, they're not. We have a new guy we're going to root for, though. We have a new guy we're going to root for. Who? Now. Nathan Doudney. And who is Nathan who is that? Doudney? He's a friend of ours. A uh, fr- friend of ours that used to, uh, he played uh, basketball for Texas Tech, and then he transferred to Gonzaga, and uh, he was up on our Tahoe trip, and now he's uh, got 210,000. I heard Blake Stepp uh, had some chips. Blake Stepp, playing, he's playing again today, but he's got chips, too. He's nice. uh, Blake and Nathan are good friends. They played together at Gonzaga. And you guys, are, you and Eric and a bunch of you guys are good friends with the Gonzaga players because Eric was so in love with Gonzaga that right. one year during the NCAA's, and you guys got to know each other. Um, all right, live call in number eight seven seven eight 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 WSOP. Marcus, we know you're out there. We're going to get your call as soon as we come back from the break. PR Radio Chat on AOL Instant Messenger. If you want to ask questions, uh, don't forget we got David Oppenheim coming up uh, in the third segment. Stick around. Right back with more Poker Road Radio. Welcome back for more Poker Road Radio, guys. We still haven't gotten to the bottom of who prank called the Cub and I last night. But one well, thing is for certain. hot, at least. If she's hot, I will forgive it. I'm it wasn't hurt. a girl that called me. It was, that was a, a female voice on the uh, voicemail that but I the, just called. But the thing is that it was definitely a man who called us last night. Probably a man going through her phone book and seeing the names that he wanted to call. God Anything? knows there's many a woman that has both mine and uh, Ollie's number in the phone. All right, we promised Marcus in San Jose. <laughs> 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 we promised Marcus in San Jose we would pick up the call. Marcus, if this is a prank, I promise we will hunt you down. Hello? Hello. What's up, my man? What's up, guys? How's it going? Good, good man. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, I wanted to uh, ask Gavin uh, if he'd give me some action on that prop that he has going on there with uh, not drinking for four months. Uh, how much action do you want? Uh, well, how much uh, was he giving up? You can have up to a quarter million. <laughs> 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 up to, uh, not exceeding, uh, quarter million. What? Keep it what, friendly. Five to one or what? Five to one? Why am I laying five? <laughs> You're laying five to one? Why do I have to lay no, anything? I'm- it's even money. It's an even money proposition bet, Marcus. And even though I don't know who you are, you better pay when I win. Uh, how much do you want to bet? 200 bucks. You got action. 200 bucks. You got action. If I fail, you got to find me. And if I win, you got to find me. So I guess it's on you both ways. <laughs> that sounds good. Anyone else wishing good? to get action on the prop bet? 877-888-WSOP. We can make it the uh, bet. Your you understand, Marcus, 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 you understand you might as well just pay me now. You cannot win that bet. We'll see. I don't know, man. I've seen how you get down. 
<laughs> That's true. A lot of people have seen how I get down. You've actually heard but how he gets down. You have not seen he it. Have, no, he may have seen it. I have partied in San Many people Buddy have seen it. Buddy from freaking European land fucking jumps the fence and comes in. <laughs> Many people have seen it, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know. But this Marcus, is the new and improved lose. G. Smith. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lose this bet. This Trust, is G. Smith Trust me on this one, Marcus. I'm not going to lose this bet. You owe me 200. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> All right. Let's take it to some poker news. Bringing you the biggest stories. Or, well, whatever we could find 10 minutes before the show. Poker news! Hot off the presses, I've got a little poker news that was given to me by one Janine Deeb as she walked through the hallway. And apparently. Barry Greenstein. This is wrong. Apparently. An employee of UB, this is all, you know, uh, allegedly. An employee of UB was uh, under the impression that her dad, Freddie Deeb, held multiple accounts at UB and was therefore cheating and decided that the right way to combat it would be to get on 2 plus 2 and post all of his personal information. Whoa. Now, I don't, sounds fair. I haven't gone on the forum. Sounds fair. Sounds like the right solution. I can see how this would deter uh, How Freddie. exactly is releasing all of his personal information just punishment? Like, We're you kidding. Think, you know, like kicking him off the site? or uh, Yeah, or maybe contacting him and or trying to verify. Him, I mean, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, for what it's worth, apparently the damage has been done. She claims that even his Social Security number was up there. I think she may be embellishing. Wow. It. I don't know. It's I don't know right. that they would. I hope he's got LifeLock. I don't understand. Is it so? Do we know that it's an employee? Is it possible that it's just some? This random is all guy? allegedly. Maybe it's right. a random guy. But in any event, how did someone get the information? A right. and B. Why in the f would you post it on two people? Because there's a lot of idiots in this world, unfortunately. It's the same reason you would use a chick's phone number to freaking prank call Joe and I <laughs> last night. That's brutal. Uh, elsewhere in poker news, also related to UB. Yeah. Uh, they have released a statement. Two main announcements. First, the cheating that we all know that went down on the site at this point, it's no mystery, dates further back than originally conceded. All right, maybe I'll get more money. March 6th was the original date. Now they say it's gone back to January of 05. Wow. Whoa. January of 05. That is a significant addition wow. of time. Over 12 months Jesus. of extra cheating that everybody encountered. Here are just some of the screen names. Crack Corn 55, Whack Me, Grab Bag 123, Gravitation, B Group, H Curtis, and, and several others. As I'm reading them over here, they were apparently operated by the same users as the previously identified cheaters, and we can now confirm that the cheating began in 05, long before Tokewire Enterprises acquired Ultimate Bet from the previous ownership. How can this go on for that length of time? I mean, how can UB's security measures be that weak? <laughs> be I, that I don't know. Completely Swiss cheese like. I don't understand. <laughs> it's crack corn. Yeah, we got. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. We've got a guy who somehow managed to. First off, Circumvent I want to find out, security. sir. Do we How really is... want the poker robe badge on this guy? I know, <laughs> I wanna... right? He's wearing an ultimate bet polo and a hat, which we neglected to notice. It could be the mole. <laughs> he, it could is be him. the UB mole. <laughs> crack corn is right in front First of off, us. what is your name and where are you from? Uh, Gary, I'm from Maryland. Gary from Maryland. I, I really want to ask you how it is that you managed to get through security and no one else did. <laughs> I told him I wanted to see the radio show. Okay, you got to understand, he has circumvented all of UB security, so this can't be yeah. that difficult. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> just, he has stolen millions of he's dollars. He's a super user. Do you think security can actually hallway. stop a super user? It can't cousin. be that yeah. hard. He, he was actually like, listen, I know what your home address is. I know what your cell phone number is. I know you have two children. He's like, if you say another word to me, yeah. your entire bank account is exactly. gone. Yeah, I will liquidate gone. it in two seconds. So please, don't F with me. <laughs> uh, well, Gary, uh, hopefully you can post somewhere online how to get through Rio security so that the rest of the world <laughs> will be able to enjoy the same uh, benefits of uh, super security breaching like you are. Um, we had a – yeah, he's got – now, this is weird. Five pound – Gary, why are you wearing so much UB gear? Are you in any way associated with the company? I'm qualified through their site. Ah. Uh, so yes. let me ask you, Gary. It was really easy to do when I could see everybody's whole card. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, yeah. well, trying to qualify, that means you must play on the site. Are you not concerned about the security measures in any way? Not so much at 1-2, oh, but a little bit. A I've been playing since February. I used to play on full tilt, yeah. but I wanted to get raked back, so found a different site. Ah. Uh. There you go. Is the rate back substantial at one two? It's about a hundred bucks a month, which is substantial to yeah. me. You can't be. How can we go? Full tilt. Come on, step up full tilt. Let's give Gary a hundred bucks. We a want month Gary. To come back. Gary, we want your business back. And I am willing. I am willing to do what I can. You still play full tilt? Oh, well, yeah. then eff it. We don't need anything. He's still on the <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> uh, you know, I, you know who I see here out of the corner of my eye, guys. I see Tony. 
who is the, the head of security here at the Reno, uh, Rio. I would like to call Tony over to the radio. Tony, now. please. So Tony. we can get to the bottom of this. Gavin, you're doing this interview. Yeah, Tony, Tony, we got issues. Tony, we got issues with your security, buddy. All right. Every day, Tony, Listen, we go to this. Every day Tony, we go to this. Tony, get, get on the mic. We need to know we, what is up with not being able to get through security, uh, even myself, a well-known radio personality such as myself, <laughs> not being able to get through security without, without all, very close to physical harassment. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's very physically clo- harassed. Very close to physically harassed. It turned out to just be emotional, but it was very close to being physical. I can see you're emotionally stressed. I am. I'm very, I'm very upset. I have you not had a badge the entire World Series, and this gentleman is telling me I cannot come and do my radio show without a badge from, from here forthwith. That is correct. That's a good word. I, I don't have a badge. What do you mean that is correct? That is correct. That's the, the decisions are made by the tournament director. Are you talking about Jack Ethel? Yes, sir. So where's, we where's Jack Ethel? We want him on the show, Jack. We're tournament right now. I don't know if you heard about it. There's a main event going on. Oh, and, oh! and we've got to take a little sass. Oh, now we got a little attitude Not only Tony. can we not conduct our well, radio show with fans, we got to take a little sass. I don't know if you heard of us before, Tony, but we happen to be Polka Road Radio. That's right. And you know what? We can destroy this tournament we just with our today. three voices. Today we'll That's the end power this we have, Tony. We can bring... I will have That's a fire alarm have. getting pulled every three minutes in this bitch. <laughs> I promise you. You will, you will not be here after the first fire alarm goes off, sir. <laughs> uh, as much as I like you, no, you're not going to be here. In all honesty, Tony, we need to know what it is that we can offer you. Perhaps one of these lovely Poker Road shirts. We are into blackmail. And we want to know what we can do to get the two security guards siphoning off all the life blood. In addition, in addition to this shirt, I am willing to offer up a beautiful young lady named Aaron's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> True story. True story. I don't yeah. doubt it for a minute. Yeah. I don't doubt it for a minute. And Unfortunately, I don't take bribes. What do you mean you don't take bribes? What? What kind of what kind of outfit is this? Yeah. Hey, look, I like this. Get pass the mic off, Tony. We've got the new the next head of security hanging on over <laughs> the here. The brand new head of security. <laughs> after we off to the top. Well, well, Tony, I, I I have a little advice for you for tomorrow morning at ten fifty five a.m. You better have reinforcements at that place because I'm getting through. We're we're uh, we're executing the first ever Amazon room bum rush. We're going to have 80 to 100 human beings with Gavin Smith at the forefront. You can't find 80 to 100 human there's, beings. There's gonna oh, be, my are friend. Are you kidding me? I don't know if my you know friend. this, but there's a main event going on. Yeah, we're coming in the masses. I never knew that. We're coming, you know that we're right coming in the masses, Tony, because you know what? Well, we, there'll probably be 100 people left because Gavin... Oh, God. Ooh, now, now I'm getting blow. slagged by security. Can you believe this shit? <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> I love it. We're absolutely out of control. All right, how about we get, you know what, I want to feel better. Yeah. And one way that we can feel better, two things. We kill the cops music, and then after <laughs> we've done that, after we've done that, we get to some voicemail. What do you say? Let's do it. Hey, guys, this is Patrick from Vancouver. Uh, just a couple things. I was watching the uh, blog special with uh, Joe and uh, the Bear playing racquetball, uh-huh. and I didn't know too much about the game racquetball so i looked it up on wikipedia and it looks like um there's a I guy the guy who this. invented uh racquetball his name is you gotta look this up yourself joe sobeck and that's joe and then it's s-o-b-e-k which wow. is kind of weird because uh all you have to do is just arrange two rearrange two letters and you got c box so let's uh the truth is this okay i was trying to keep this shit quiet for a long time but i invented racquetball when i was very young true story we didn't want it to follow me, right. so we inverted the E and the O. Right. Joe Sobeck. It is my game. It is my name. Yep. And then that's all. And Who I won? did destroy Barry. Who won? So. You, you beat Barry? Oh, it was embarrassing. You know, let's, let's just put this out in the air. So we've been talking about playing racquetball for a long time, and I said, oh, Barry, let's play this day. Let's play this day. So I call him up, and I say, okay, Barry, I'm going to come over. Let's play some racquetball. Keep in mind, you know, Barry is, you know, in, de- in decent shape for an old man. He's an old you know, but I run every day. I play sports. So he actually said, okay, no problem. But you might want to play with Alex for a little bit first because I've been playing all month. <laughs> I love it. So I just said, okay, I'll be over there in a little bit. I come over and summarily beat his ass into the ground. I mean, he's falling on the ground. It was embarrassing. It was absolutely embarrassing. And then we leave, and I just told him. And he said, well, I was a little tired. You know, I, I was doing it. And I said, Barry, you will never beat me in racquetball. Never. Ever. For the rest of your life, until you are in the grave, you will never be me. It will not happen. Wow. That's strong. That's a long time. Because he is of good health. This man, and I love him. He was my father. But this man and his 
faith in his own ability and everything he does is truly unbelievable. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's a good way to be. It's better than not having faith in your ability. That's true. Uh, what else? We got some more voicemails, Sean? Give us some more fun. One more. Hey, guys. This is Martin Florida. I was just calling to uh, defend Joe a little bit because everyone's always picking on him about using his function of. But Ali <laughs> does not stop saying, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Oh, yeah. And good point. Fact, you just say that a lot. Yeah, you got uh, two now. You but got anyway, two. when Joe's... What what well, happened? Oh, what happened to Oh, he cut off? Well, he got what he needed to get out there. You know what? I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't like to hear it when people's voicemails cut off. I'm not going to lie. I definitely say I'm not going to lie to you guys. You do say that a lot. You do say that a lot. All right. So from now on, is it enough of a tweak for me to say I am going to lie to you guys? Sure, if you're going to lie to us. Is that all right? Sure. All right. Uh, One thing I'm not going to lie about is the fact that we are going to take a quick break and be right back with perhaps the most dapper SOB. At the W. It's Montel Chilliams. Not Montel Chilliams. One, <laughs> David Oppenheim. Be right back with more Poker Road Video. <laughs> Welcome back for more Poker Road Radio. Hollywood the Cub, the Caveman, and a gentleman who has around $600,000 in tournament caches. Don't sell that short, by the way, because he only plays around 8 to 10 tournaments per year. He is regarded as one of the best limit hold'em and stud cash game players in the world, and perhaps most notably, made his big screen debut in 2007, <laughs> playing the role of Josh Cohen in the smash hit "Lucky You." Please welcome David Oppenheim. Thank you, thank you. Nice to be here, boys. Nice yes. to be here with my boy Joe, Gavin, and Ali. Uh, Gavin, congratulations, man, on a brilliant 2008 World Series. <laughs> oh, ouch! Wow. Hey, ouch. and you too on that 600k that you've won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget Lucky You. Where were you in that flick, Gavin? Were you in there? No, I, I was actually lucky not to be in that flick. <laughs> you were yeah, it was, it, was, it was Lucky You to not be in that film. Absolutely. All right, so first thing I want to talk to you about is this year's World Series, David. How's it been going for you? How many events have you played? <clears throat> uh, I played in – this is my sixth one, the main event. Uh, I've had a pretty good tournament run. I came in seventh, ninth, and uh, came pretty close in the horse event. You mm-hmm. know, didn't okay. hatch, but Surprising. Got, got deep. Uh huh. And how's the main event looking so far? What's uh, talk, walk me through day one and uh... you know day one was a great day, man. I have like 115 thousand. Uh, nothing bad happened. Uh, I got, you know, kind of lucky. A guy gave me 30 thousand in one pot, just kind of handed it to me. And what was that him? Uh, well, I'll go. I'll go through the hand. I guess I, I uh, raised in first base to 800. One guy called. The big blind called. Flop came 884. Went check check check. I had my usual 5-7 of clubs. <laughs> the, turn, the turn came a 6. The big blind bet 1,500. I made it 4,500. He made it 14,000. He had like 18 left. So I like thought for a while and then just pushed him in. And uh, he called me with two aces, boys. Wow. 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 Raise, re-raise, re-raise. Yeah, $30,000 gift. That's unbelievable. That is yeah. a pretty Where were these people on my table? You know, it's really on weird. Day one. That never happens in like the WPT events that I played. So, mm-hmm. really, so you think that the World Series is a much juicier field than the, the main, WPT? The main for event, sure. for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I've gotten some mixed opinions out there. I've been interviewing a lot of different people, and I think it really is a matter of what kind of table you draw, right? I mean, what what kind of table are you sitting at, Dave? Uh, well, the first table, I didn't know one person at the table. Right. Not one. Which is Everybody ideally what you want. Yeah, I mean, that's that's always you know a good start. Right. You know. But you know what? I hear different opinions about this, too, and I want all three of you guys to weigh in. Some people say they would rather play against pros because they can interpret what it is that they're doing. Maybe they're not like a, a top-tier pro, but maybe a guy who they know has been doing this for a while and can interpret accordingly it's, some of the moves that, that you make. That's still I don't stupid. think that that's true. I mean, I, I understand the concept because blah, 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 you're going to take a bad beat. But the bottom line is you want people at your table who you don't know, who don't know what they're doing, who are going to gift you 30000 Yeah, 000. The, the, the pros that you just want never that. really stack off like – you know, a thirty or forty thousand, like you know, the bad players. All right. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd prefer to play with with the liver ones. Agreed. Right. All right. Perhaps a live one. Perhaps a pro. We don't know. He's been waiting on the phone for a little while. His name is Rich. He's out in Michigan, and he wants some tourney advice. Rich, are you there? Hey, it's Rick. By the way. Hey, oh, Rick. Sorry about that. It's. Sorry, I thought the camera hey, was silent. Real no, quick. But... Real quick. Uh, early line on the wings next year, Gavin. Since I picked up Osa. Say again. Huh? I said real quick one before is what do you think the wings are odds are next year picking up post and winning it repeating? The the wings are pretty much a lock for the president's cup and they're you know, they they didn't they didn't lose anyone and they got hosted. That's pretty bad. Did, we just, did we just have Red hockey wings. conversation yeah. on the yeah. show? Well, it's kinda 
have any. He's a hockey guy. Uh, my actual question, I have a huge tournament this weekend, $150 buy-in, which for me is, is legitimately huge. I'm probably going to have to miss the first two hours of tournament blinds were are half an hour long. Um, it's 10,000 starting chips, which is nice. What should be my strategy knowing that I'm going to miss probably the first maybe three blind levels? What should I really approach this when I, when I, get, when I get there next hit? Uh, okay. Well, you know, any time that I go, out, go into a tournament and just sit down, I really try to just, you know, for the first 45 minutes, whether I get there late or not, play really tight and just kind of see what the table's doing. That's kind of, you know, my... Uh, How much are you going to lose, though? In, in four levels, like, that's four levels you're going to lose. Well, what, what, what are the blinds 000? starting at? What are the blinds starting at, Rich? 25.50. Rick, I mean, he's not lose that much. 25.50. 25.50. And so. do they double? Do they do they go to like 40? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably gonna lose one, about one, two, two, four. Oh my God! You're probably gonna lose about. You three, may as well not even 000. show up. Yeah, you're gonna. No, you're gonna be short when you get there. You're gonna lose three or four thousand. I think you're gonna have to go in and fire. Why are you gonna miss the first four levels? Unfortunately, unfortunately, my work schedule. I they made a ch- uh, change to my hours, and I couldn't switch it. Rick, you really so sound was, like you're starting to come down with the flu. <laughs> Weird. That's, I thought that, and that may happen. <laughs> if this is a legitimately huge buy-in for you, don't light a match to the damn entry. And well, no, actually, take I, the day off work. I didn't have to pay for it. it. I won it through a free roll tournament, so it's free. It's essentially free. I'm free rolling in this tournament. All right. If Let's, you go in and you're down to like six thousand, which I, is where I think you're going to be about. Yeah, that's uh, what I was guessing. I think you got to go. In, I think you got to go in and fire. I don't think you can take the. Normally, sound opiate advice uh, of playing tight. Right yeah, I don't know that. anything about how court plays. He could be like Nitzilla. He could be just like muck, 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 muck. Ace King Chip. Ace King muck, Chip. Muck, <laughs> muck. Yeah, because I, I really don't think you're gonna. I don't really think you're gonna have the time to do that. You're gonna get in there and blinds are gonna be. What, what did it say? They're gonna be at like three six when you get there. Or two, By four. the time he gets there, I'm hoping, be, I'm hoping two four, but probably three six. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you know, you're you're gonna get in there and only have ten blinds. So you, you basically have to to go right to a short stack strategy, which is gonna be okay. basically shover shover uh, fold. Cool, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. No yeah, worries, Rick. Take it easy. We got another caller out there. Brent in Myrtle Beach. Brent, you there? Brent. Hello? No love. Damn it. That's right. I want to talk to David anyway more. Okay, Absolutely. yeah, no, I want to talk to David as well. And so do some of our guys out there in cyberspace. You know we got the chat room filling up with questions, one of which revolves around the cash games. We know that you play some pretty ridiculously big cash games. How have they been during the World Series? Um, well, this year they, they start off pretty slow. <clears throat> Then they really picked up, uh, I'd say, two weeks into the to the World Series, mm-hmm. and I just kind of got into like a rhythm of playing 65 hours a week uh, between the few tournaments I played and the cash games, and it was Groundhog Day. Wake up, go to the casino, yep. get home at 8 a.m. and Is that Bellagio sleep. that they were going? Bellagio, man. Yeah. Bobby's room. And what are you guys playing out there? A mix of games? Yeah, we, uh, we were playing anywhere between 2,000, 4,000, or to 3,000, 6,000. Actually, one day we played 4,000, 8,000, and... Uh, and it's it's a mix of anywhere between six games to the la- the last time we played it was twelve games, twelve games. Yeah. Now, wow. do, you, do you have a preference? Do I have a preference on the games? Like I, if you could go in there and say, guys, this is what we're playing because I, would. I will torch you. What yes. would you, what would you say? Yeah, I won't. I won't. I won't divulge. Oh, that nice. Wow. Like, oh. Yeah, like a true professional. <laughs> so why, now, now talking, we've been speaking to a lot of the different guests that we've had about the movement toward mixed games involving some of the more obscure. Uh, forms, you know, like the Badoogies and the, you know, uh, the triple draws. Not that they're obscure insofar as people aren't familiar with them, but obscure insofar as not a lot of people have a lot of felt time with it. Why do you think this has been happening? Uh, why, why has there been like a movement towards the mix? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think a lot of it probably has to do with the, you know, the big $50,000 horse event, you know, and, and it got a lot of publicity and, uh, you know, and you're getting a field of all the best players in the world and people see them playing it. They want to play it too. Now, why is it that you would go and sit down with what I have to assume is a pretty tough lineup when you get out there and you get into some of these cash games? I mean, we all hear about game selection. We all hear about bankroll management and all these things and these books and whatever. I mean, like, why would you go and sit and play with the people you're playing with? Um, You know, that's a fair question. I don't really have, like, any sort of humble answer for that one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I just I like to play high. And if you're going to play the highest limit, you're going to, you know, you're going to get, like, a, a small you know, group of people that are, are willing to play that high. Right. One of the analogies I always hear with respect to big limit poker is that just because you're a member of a more expensive country club doesn't make you a better golfer. Is Does this hold true even at the levels that you're playing Yeah, I mean, who are, who are some of the guys that you play with who you guys just build a game around? You know, really... He's not going to tell you that. No, <laughs> I, I, th- there, there really isn't any one person that we build the game around. Um, 
everyone at those levels can play. You're not going to find anyone that's, you know, a terrible player. Everyone mm-hmm. plays at a pretty high level. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for, you know, part of that is, you know, fun for me. I, I enjoy playing with, you know, the best players. I think it makes me a better player. I think that, you know, a lot of times uh, it's short-sighted for, for, like, professionals or, you know, people that are just starting to play to say, oh, I won't play in a tough game or I won't play with a tough player. You know, I mean, I know for me, I clearly became a much better player when I started playing with better players. So, you know, even your short-term loss might be your long-term gain right. when you play with better players. What do you think is the more respectable accolade uh, in poker, to be a successful cash game player or to be a successful tournament player, and why? Boy, I sure hope it's a cash game player for myself. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I don't. You know, they're, they're totally different skills, and I have respect for both of them. You know, the, the guys who are great tournament players, you know, they have a special skill set that they're phenomenal at. And... Uh, and the cash game players have a different skill set. A lot of our listeners play smaller limits. They're out there. They're playing the one-two no limits. They're playing the fifty-cent one-dollar no limits. What was your path to to getting you know up to playing four and eight thousand up in Bobby's room? Like, how'd you get started, and and how'd you rise to that level? Uh, well, I had uh, I started at a real young age. I was sixteen years old, and I would ditch school once a week. And uh, go listen, down. listen up, kids. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is to all the 16 and 17 year olds out there <laughs> that want to play for big money someday. Um, I would ditch school and uh, and I'd dress up in a suit and go and play at the local casino and come back for baseball practice. And where was this? And this was in Los Angeles. Uh-huh. I'd go down the bicycle club and I. St- I'll never forget this one dickhead security guard that would like oh. always. <laughs> you now work for the Rio. That that, that, uh, that would always like throw me out, man. And I, I like tried to find out when he'd work so I could get down there and play. Anyway, so then I was like 18, and I went to college and uh, and started playing like 1020, and did that for like 13 months mm-hmm. and made like 45,000. And boy, I thought I was really rich. Wow! Holy smokes! At 18, smokes. yeah. And uh, and then from there, you know, by the time I was 19, I was playing two and 400. So well, what, what were you playing when you were going in originally here? Did you start? Oh, I started. Because it wasn't no limit back no, in the day. I, right, you no, you know, it was, I, it, was, uh, it was one and two limit, limit. hold'em and two and four limit hold'em. Holy and then, smokes. like, somewhere in between there, I moved up to three and six dollar, and I thought that was huge. And then I went to ten twenty, and then, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, I was playing two and four hundred at, like, nineteen. And, I mean, you just continued to mow over the games? I you mean, built up a bankroll? You know, I would win. I, I mean, I didn't really build up a bankroll. I mean, I was 16, you know, I would whatever, spend my money on cheeseburgers or whatever. But right. I didn't lose. I'd make a little <laughs> money playing, like, the one and twos and the two and fours. Uh-huh. You know, I came out ahead somehow. My parents were both poker players, so they kind of, like, taught me the basic fundamentals really? of how to play. Well, that's yeah. Were they aware that you were sneaking off to play at the bike? No, they were so not. So they didn't know that. They okay. were not aware of that. <laughs> no, and how and, could they And be? they were not supportive oh, yeah. of that either. <laughs> they would not be supportive. Yeah, they, I mean, got, they, they, they didn't get pissed whenever you went to school on Wednesday instead of going to the good game? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your game selection? You, didn't need, you don't need history and world geography. Were you ever taking shots? Because, I mean, one of the things that I find in a lot of these professionals is that they, they, they have copious amounts of gamble in them. Yeah. Where if you've got 10,000 in your name, you will jump in a 4 and 800 hold them and just hope for the best with 12 bets in front of you. Uh, w- was that the formula for yeah, you? Yeah, you know, I remember, like, uh, really clearly, I was 19 years old and. Uh, and I was playing like two and four hundred, mm-hmm. and I like went down to the casino and I played a guy heads up two and four hold him, and I had 40, heads up heads up two and four hold him. I had forty five thousand dollars once yeah. again, which seemed like more money than God than anyone could ever have. <laughs> right. So I went down and uh, I lost about sixty percent of my bankroll in that match, and uh, lost twenty five grand. So I went, I I drove through traffic, got home, I rested for like two hours, and came back that evening to uh, to play with my case twenty grand. And I've been really lucky in those situations my whole life. You know, when, when my back was against the wall, I just, you know, somehow have gotten lucky and, and uh, didn't get crushed. Do you think that part of the reason that people have a tendency to play with their back up against the wall is because they perform better under pressure? Because I know a lot of guys that do this and, and do well in that situation. Uh, well, you know, I mean, clearly the reason that I did it was just sheer stupidity. I mean, you, should, you, know, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, if you're going to be a really good poker player, you have to do well in pressure situations. But, you know, you also kind of have to, you know, have some bankroll, you know. I'd management. like you to look directly at Gavin while you're answering <laughs> this question here. Because Gavin does not share the bankroll management flight. What was no, the Gavin's No, I definitely I 100% agree with what he said. I just don't, in theory. Follow, I don't follow it. I'm the same as David. I've, I've been lucky in, in key situations, too. But I've sat down with my case money. Hundreds of times, you yeah. know. I mean, I do it all the time. 
and I, I don't say it's smart to do what I do. But, it's not smart to drink every night either, and I did that for the last three years. <laughs> but what is it? Like, I, I honestly want to know what mechanism it is inside of, of some of the most successful poker players that makes it such a universal attribute for them to put themselves in these scenarios. Well, you know, I, I think that it's actually an important, you know, characteristic to have. Uh, if you're going to, like, reach the highest levels in the poker world, you kind of have to have that no-fear, fuck-it type of attitude. No care about money. You know, which I think any of, like, the top players have, where, where you know, they're going to kind of risk it, risk so, it all. And if you don't have that, I, you know, I, I think you can still be a very successful poker player and do well, but you're just, you, you probably won't reach the highest levels. So you're going to be on, like, the Eric Seidel side of the spectrum, where it's like, I would never, ever, ever do anything to jeopardize it. Like, he, he seems to me like the very fundamental guy. Am I wrong? Uh, I don't know how Eric is. I mean, I know that he gambles. I know he bets it up a little bit. Does he? But yeah. What? Well, yeah, Eric? you know, er- Eric's he's not older a, he's not and wiser. A sicko, but I mean, you know, it's not like he doesn't gamble. It's and I'm, like I'm guessing bet. that when he was younger, he probably did do some reckless type of gambling. But now, obviously, think. it'd be hard to get reckless with the freaking huge vault full of gold doubloons he probably got at his house <laughs> that none of us know about. And you can never tell if he's in a good mood or a bad mood as he walks into the room. I, I remember room. the first year that I met Eric said L.N. and John Jawanda was at the Taj Mahal. Um, and they came in, and it was when the Taj Mahal was adding all of their extra money back to the Kino. Uh-huh. So it turned out that like, all the money that's not claimed over the course of a year, they have to put back in, right? So it turns out they get there, and Kino actually is a positive EV game. Uh, for this one period of time while they're getting rid of everything. Okay. So Eric and John Jawanda are each taking one number and betting huge sums of money on it and playing, <laughs> playing Kino. And uh, they went through everything they brought to the Taj Mahal and then were going to all of their friends and, and getting everything they got. And I think, I think during this positive EB, EV uh, ex- expedition, they lost about 250000 or so. <laughs> oh, my God. That is one tandem I would never have predicted would do that. <laughs> there were keto pros for this one tournament. Now, what about you, Debbie? You like to gamble? You uh, you, you got uh, your money in action elsewhere outside of poker? I mean, I, I like to gamble a little bit, mo- mostly on sports. Uh, Uh-oh. And, and a little bit a little bit of blackjack. Okay. Yeah. And isn't that a big mistake? You know, it is a, a, gig- a gigantic mistake for most people. You know, I, luckily for me, I, I get some pretty good information, so... So really? it's not really like a losing proposition for me, or hasn't been. Huh. And do you, like, go with uh, are there other poker players and you guys pool your money, like th- that kind no, of thing? No, I mean, I just kind of, like, have a network of, you know, pretty smart handicappers. And, and uh, you know, through many, many, many years of losing, I finally learned <laughs> that I cannot make the picks myself and kind of just go feel, on the advice uh, of others. Feel yeah. free to text me those plays when <laughs> you, you got them. <laughs> I have no problem receiving that information. <laughs> Just remember that once you text them over to Gavin, you will have to take the other side and go reverse huge. Because <laughs> the only way. Gavin's track record has not been that good on those text message no. uh, updates, right? No, no. My track record is great when I listen to smart people. Oh, really? It's just horrible whenever I make my own place. All right. Well, listen, David, you are in action today in just a few short minutes inside the Amazon room. What's the strategy going to be? You know, man, uh, it's the same as the first day. I, I, I go in there planning to play really tight, which I did, and, and I only played about 70% of the hands the first two hours. That's all. <laughs> that's all. So, Boy, you're a real nit. So, uh, you know, that's my plan today, and just kind of, like, see what, you know, the situation dictates. All right, right on. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck heading into day three. We hope that you get there. And, we, and you get there with a healthy stack, my friend. Thanks for having me, boys. Always Stay a pleasure. Safe. All right, guys, we'll be right back with more Poker Road Radio. Welcome back for more Poker Road Radio. I am virtually alone here at the radio booth, with the exception of the fact that my boys Brad Booth and Ray Hansen Ew. have just rolled up here to grab some Poker Road patches, which we always love having everyone wear. Uh, and here, Shrunk is fast and furiously grabbing those to hand out. Now, five pounds is just me and you on the mics now. What's up, Ali? This is your moment. To I shine. know. I don't know what to say. I'm this so frightened. Big, this is the big chance. By the way, what's up with your girl Jess, your Mahjong Pro Jess? She hit me up on MySpace. She's going to be in town soon. Is like she really? Next week. I think we need to arrange a heads up Mahjong battle. I think you're right. Between Jess and I. She's been texting me a lot. Oh, now what does that mean? No, she hasn't really. <laughs> what well, that that would be shrunk back on the mic, by the way. She you know wants what? to, you know what she wants to play for. She wants to play for Poker Road gear. She really? wants Poker Road gear. What bad. she doesn't know is that she can get the shit for free from us. <laughs> Let's not tell her anything. Let's hope she didn't even hear this show right now. Oh, she's listening. Let's whisper. Then she won't hear us. Uh, what about Oppenheim? Huh? 
Is that one of the freaking most trendily dressed humans in the poker world or what? He's so sparkly. He's the, the he coolest, keeps his freaking coolest finger guy in on poker. the pulse. Second, he, second coolest guy in poker behind he, Lindgren. He is one of the cooler sons of bitches. No, I think he's cooler than E-Dog. No, no one's cooler, cooler than E-Dog. E-Dog. Who the hell else? What man can get away with wearing a, a sequined hoodie like that? <laughs> and just You know why? It's because he's from L.A. The That's photos why. on the website will not do that hoodie justice. Are you serious? Well, I why don't we get some additional photos that will? Don't you have a sequined hoodie? I don't have any sequined hoodies. All right, Brad, good luck. Brad Booth heading into the room to get, to get his uh, action underway. Guys, i got to be honest with you. I think that we should stage a coup. The three of us, we take over the show. F Gavin and Joe. No. And we just take over the world. No? You're not I don't, I don't think they'd like that. I think we should and explain. I kind of like uh, having a paycheck come <laughs> my way, so. Come on. We'll make millions. We should explain why Gavin and Joe are gone. Riley, trivia. I, I don't know. Why I, I are know. Gavin and Joe gone? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't here when they left. So. Nobody paid any attention know. to what's taking it place It was because they walked away. Are they playing at Bellagio right now? Yes. They have gone over to the Bellagio where the Bellagio Cup is underway. Yeah. Today is the 5K buy-in? I don't know. No, 5K is like the main event, I think. Today's got to be a prelim or something. No, but the main event is 15K. Main event is 15K? Yes. Okay. Well, today may be the 5K. Indeed, we are going to wish them luck as they head into there. A reminder, 877-836-ROAD is the voicemail line. PRRadioPokerRoad.com is the email line. Jump on WorldPokerTour.com if you're outside the U.S. to get your groove on. Hollywood blog available at OliverNajad.com. OliverNajad.com. You got it. I have not updated it in several weeks. However... Keep checking back because there will be content at some point in my short lived life. Uh, full tilt. That's where we're going to jump on. I'll play full tilt today. You guys want to play? Yeah, I'll play. You guys in? All right. We're going to play. 816 Down. mixed game tap. It's my horse table. Uh, that's it, man. I think I'm ready to just call it a day. I'm going to the pool. What are you guys doing? I have work to do. I'll you go suck. For a swim. You'll go for a swim? Yeah. Riley, that was really, really <laughs> pedophilistic. It's Riley's last day tomorrow. Is tomorrow? it really? Right? Tomorrow's my last day. Five pounds? I'm going to miss you. I know. We should definitely take a soap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on behalf of Shrunk, Gavin, Joe, Five Pound, our boy Chris, who's been kicking it for the whole show, and Brad super Booth. producer, Maddie Shaves. We are going to say goodbye from the Amazon. Same time, same place, 11 a.m. tomorrow. We'll catch you later. Peace. Peace out.